right, it's Massive Action Monday, and here we go. You already know, if you're watching right now, this is the live stream. And we got an amazing topic for you today. Um, you're really going to love this topic today. And if you want to interact with me, if you want to interact with me, I urge you to go over to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Massive Action Movement, because this is the best visual you're going to get of this. But definitely going to be interacting with both. I'll periodically walk over there to Instagram and ask questions and stuff like that so you can understand it. But, oh, ask questions and stuff like that. So that way, um, we can interact. We're going to make this interactive each week. I've been going back and forth. But if you want to interact with me on Facebook, go over to Facebook right now. Um, I definitely have it open right here. I'll be looking over here periodically. You might see me look back. Engage in the chat and stuff like this. But this is going to be an amazing topic today because we're talking about seven ridiculously effective mindsets that will make you successful starting today. Now, let me tell you something. As an entrepreneur, one of the biggest things I hear people always talking about is they want to know all the skills, the techniques, the tactics. And for the last three weeks, we've been talking about a lot of techniques and tactics in order to make you successful. But I guarantee you this week will be the most important live stream you watch when it comes to being successful as an entrepreneur. This is literally the game changer when it comes to, I want to say, living the life that you want, becoming successful, really accomplishing anything you want in life. This is the game changer. So if that sounds like something you want to learn about, the one thing that you could learn, these seven mindsets, this whole way of thinking, if you want to learn something right now today that if you take it and apply it, it will start making you successful today. If you're in the chat, drop a Y. We got any people in here already? We got a couple people in here already? Okay, good to see everybody here. So seven mindsets that are going to make you successful. I promise you. If you watch this today, these mindsets will change everything for you. So I'm going to be going back and forth, like I said, periodically. But we're going to jump right into this really quickly and talk about the mindsets that are going to make you successful. But before we get to that, I want to talk about what's the biggest thing. Well, let me just start with this. Seven mindsets for success. Let's just keep it short. Now, if y'all know my story, and I talk about it so many times, I feel like everybody knows at this point, you know I came from sleeping on my mother's floor. So I started off sleeping on my mother's floor. And the biggest thing that I had while I was on my mother's floor was all the skills. I knew how to make websites, design, and business systems. I knew processes. But I still found myself broke sleeping on the floor. So what happened? What was the problem? Well, obviously, most people think that the problem was you didn't know enough. You didn't have much, enough information. But I can promise you, I definitely had the information. What I did not have was the mentality of success. And it led me to come up with this equation for success. And if you take this equation, I promise you, it will make you more successful. So what is the success equation? Let's write this up here. The success equation, right? So when it comes to success, there's a couple things you need to master. Now, of course, we want skills, right? If you watch some of my other live streams, I've even talked about how you can acquire these skills if you don't have them personally. But for the most part, we're going to need some type of skills or a skill set in order to be successful. Does that make sense? If you're going to go do any job, you're going to need a certain amount of skills. If you're watching, drop a Y if that makes sense. That I'm going to need skills in order to be successful. This is pretty straightforward. Drop a Y. Let me know. Does that make sense? Drop a Y if it makes sense. I see a couple people coming in. I see a couple people. Hey, what's up, AJ the Menace? AB Kingdom, I see y'all, but does this make sense? Skill set, right? But what most people don't understand is that it's a combination of things in order to be successful. So I'm about to give you the game right now. If you're watching this right now, I'm about to give you the game. If y'all want the game, drop a Y in the chat. Do you want the game? I'm about to give you the game on this live. So I promise the shit we're going to go over today is going to blow your mind. You're going to be like, I never knew this about the way I think my brain, my mindset. I promise you it's going to be a game changer. So the success equation is this. Skill set, skill set plus mindset equals success. So what I began to notice was that the more I changed my mentality about the world, the more I changed the way I thought about the world, the more I was successful. And I'm going to tell you, the biggest lie that we hear when it comes to being successful is that we need to have a bunch of skills in order to be successful. Now, like I told you before, of course you need skills. You need to know how to do shit. But at the end of the day, if your mindset is fucked up, it doesn't matter. Let me ask everybody here a question. Serious question. 
Have you ever known anybody who wasn't that talented, maybe wasn't even that smart in your eyes, but they were somehow successful? Maybe they had a lot of financial success, a lot of business success, maybe even a lot of social success, but you found yourself like, why the fuck is this person so successful? And I'm, I got all the skills, I'm talented, but I'm not successful. Anybody had that feeling before? Drop a Y if you know what I'm talking about. Say, I've had that feeling in the chat if you know what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm talking about, drop it in the chat. I'm going to just say over real quick. If you know what I'm talking about, drop a Y in the chat. So everybody's had that feeling of like, why the fuck is this person so successful when I'm doing all this work? It's because they didn't understand this. You had the skill set, but you didn't have the mindset. And I would tell you that honestly having this may be a little bit more superior than the skill set. But I always like to put them together. If you're starting off as an entrepreneur, it's important that you have these. So we're going to go through this. So I came up with this idea of how most people think, and it's called the Massive Action Triad. Right? Triad. So this is basically a triangle that has three parts to it. So we've got mindset, we've got theory, and we have at the other end of it technique. So let me break you down the three types of people I've met in my experience as entrepreneurs. And maybe you fall in one of these categories. What we're trying to get you to have is a triad, right? Everybody understand this? So basically, most people that I meet are theory people. Now, theory people are the people who can tell you everything that's wrong with the shit that you're doing, but somehow they're not that successful. They have all these ideas and they postulate on, oh, you can do it this way. If you start the business, or if I started the business, it would be like that. I know we've all met people like that. You may have friends, family, all those people like that. I know we've met people like that. Have you met somebody like that? Just let me know. I know we've all met people like that, right? But even more so, and let me, let me pull up the Facebook right here real quick. Let me pull up my Facebook right here real quick. I want to interact with everybody on Facebook, too. See if I can pull this up real quick. My Facebook is tripping right now. Sorry, y'all. Try to pull this up. But basically... The theory people, they have all these ideas about what success is, but you find that they're not very successful or they have just an average life because they're all theory. They're all in the clouds, right? And I admit that I was this person at first. I could tell you everything about your business, but I would have these periods where I wasn't doing shit, right? But I had all these ideas, so what was stopping me, right? Okay, here we go. Like I said, if y'all in the chat on Facebook, wherever, go to facebook.com slash massive action movement. It's the best way to watch it and the best quality. But um, if not, just chill here with me on Instagram and, we, and we'll make it happen from there. Okay. Now, very people are the people who can tell you Okay, here we go. All right, so next we have what I call the technique people. Now, these people are addicts to the techniques. They want to know the next hip thing that you can do in order to be successful. Like, oh, what's the marketing strategy? How do I build a funnel out? How do I do all this type of stuff? And these people will bombard you. If you're not giving them techniques right out the gate, they're like, I don't want to hear it. It's bullshit. It's all about the grind, the hustle. You got to have this type of mindset to, like, not even mindset. You got to have these type of things to make it. This is how you make a business. This is how you do a business system. And true enough, I'm big on techniques. And anybody who knows me knows I'm big on knowing the techniques. That's why I'm doing massive action live streams every Monday to teach you techniques. But I promise this last thing I'm going to talk about is what's truly going to make you successful, even if you didn't have these. That's the killer about this. I don't say this. Look, I, I'm going to tell you all something, and this is not bragging. I probably read over a thousand books at this point. I know so much shit about like the way this shit works that I thought that, oh, just knowing this shit would make me successful. But I found myself having a bunch of theory, a bunch of techniques and being broke on the floor of my mom's house. That doesn't sound fun. Right. And it's very embarrassing. Because I remember I was telling somebody today, I was like, yeah, it's very embarrassing if somebody wants to go out on a date or something with you, and you're like, I don't want to take you back to mom's house. So to me, <laughs> this is like the most important thing you can learn. So it's the mindset, people. Now, I want to do talk about a trap that you need to avoid when it comes to mindset. That's why today we're going to give you seven specific mindsets that are going to teach you how to be successful. But one trap you want to avoid is being a mindset person who is completely delusional and has no tethering to reality. Now, what do I mean by this? There's these people who, they get into the law of attraction. Now, let me stop, let me pause. Love the law of attraction. Think and grow rich, all that type of shit. Big fan of it, believe in it, all that type of stuff. But there's these people who literally read these books and they don't understand the part of how to base it in reality to make it actually work for them. 
So you'll be reading the books, you'll be writing down your goals, you'll write down your statements of, you know, by this time I'm going to make this much money, stuff like that. And you'll find it doesn't work because you don't have these other mindsets that are going to round it out. The best way I can put it is, whatever the mind can believe and achieve it, whatever the mind can believe and conceive it can achieve is definitely true. But there's all this knowledge you have to have to, ever, to take that simple statement and understand it. Does that make sense? Like, if you're really good at something, I don't have to explain it a lot in order for you to be good at it. Does that make sense? Drop a Y if that makes sense. The reason it's hard to understand these simple truths is because there's a lot of underlying knowledge that you have to have. Drop a Y if that makes sense. Drop a Y if that makes sense in the chat. I'm going to come over here real quick. Okay. Drop a Y if that makes sense. So we're going to go deep here today. I'm really excited about going through this because I don't get to go and talk about this with a lot of people on camera, but we're going to go deep today on where this comes from. Because before I tell you these mindsets, it's important for you to understand where it comes from. And I'm going to tell you a way to rewire your brain today. I'm literally going to teach you how to go under the hood of your brain, rewire the shit, and make this work for you. We're going to get this mindset thing handled. So I'm not, I, my whole goal is to give you a lot of value on all these live talks. And I could just give you something else that everybody else says. But my goal is to give you a lot of fucking value. So now that we've talked about this, we know that skill set plus mindset equals success. We want to have a balance of the three. But if we had to have more, we would want mindset. And hopefully that makes sense to you right now. Because we're going to go through this really quickly. So let's move into social conditioning. And I call this the tyranny of social conditioning. All right. So this is some this is some crazy shit. Now, social conditioning, if you're not familiar with what this is, this is basically social norms that exist that make us believe a certain mindset. So for example, I go to school, get a good job, that's the only way you can be successful. That is conditioned by society. Now, before I go too deep, a lot of people hear about social conditioning and think it's bad. There's some good shit about social conditioning. For example, you know not to jump off a building because you know gravity will basically make you splat on the floor. Now, that's good social conditioning. I'm glad I know that. I know not to put my put electric or metal and shit into sockets because I'm getting electrocuted. That's good social conditioning. But the same thing that can be good can also become bad. And where social conditioning becomes bad is because we have these beliefs that we adopt that are not true, but they seem true because the entire crowd has said they were true. And if you understand anything about success, as a, as a person who wants to be an individual, who wants to find those people who really connect with them, we have to understand that we have to break social conditioning where it does not serve us. That's key. Write that down if you can. We have to break social conditioning where it does not serve us. Everybody follow that. So there's a process called socialization. And what socialization is, you can look this up online, is basically the process where you adopt the cultural norms, beliefs, and customs of the people around you. So I'm going to be straight honest with y'all. I was from the hood. I was fighting all the fucking time. I was getting into shit. And when I was in that mindset, I thought that's what it was. So my whole thing is, it's not that it's who, who I was. It's because that's what was normalized around me. So through the process of socialization, the religion I believed, the ideas I adopted, what I believed about myself, all came from that process of socialization. Everybody goes through this. Why do you believe the things you believe? Why do you believe the things you believe? If you're a religious person, why do you believe that religion? If you thought that you had to go to go get a job or you have to live a certain way, why do you believe it? Ask yourself this. Where did it come from? Usually it came from your parents. If you are into politics, why do you believe the political party you believe? Now, there are those people who have form their judgment. They've got out of this process. And there's nothing wrong with believing these things. But typically what I find is people don't believe it for their own reasons. And it's because of a process of socialization. And if you're following, you can see where we're going so far. And the reason this is bad is because most socialization and most social conditioning doesn't serve you. Do you follow me so far? Drop a Y if you follow me so far. Drop a Y if you follow me so far. If you follow me so far, drop a Y. Because we're going to go deep. I promise what I'm about to tell you next, we're about to go deep on this. So drop a Y if you follow me so far. I see a couple people coming into the chat. Okay, perfect. So through this process of socialization, 
it creates what we call the social expectations paradigm. And what this basically means is that we tend to get what we believe we're going to get. I'll give you a prime example. If you go out right now and you feel like people are going to reject you, you're typically going to have these micro expressions and this whole demeanor about yourself that's going to cause you to get what you want. Um, also can be called like a self-fulfilling prophecy. And this typically happens. So if I believe that I'm not worth shit because I'm black or whatever it is because of the environment or the neighborhood I come from, I believe I'm not going to be successful, then I'm typically going to find ways to make myself not successful. Oh, they would never fuck with me because, you know, they don't, they don't buy stuff from people like me. I remember my good friend Country Cowboy talked about this. When he first started, I remember this when I was still back in my mom's house, he was like, man, I don't want to put myself on the face of a product because I don't think people will buy it from me. Wow. Nowadays, if you ask him that, that's just ridiculous to him because it's just funny because he himself knows that people from all kinds of backgrounds will buy from him. doesn't matter the race, anything, they will buy from him because, and this is something we talked about weeks ago because of the vision he had. But the thing is, think about having that mindset and if he never would have put himself out there. This is somebody I've made over six figures with. But if he never would have put himself out there in that way, he would have missed all that money. So if his expectation was that people won't fuck with me, then he never would have built the success that he was able to build. So this is why this is so important for us to rewire this. Does everybody get this? Does everybody understand this? So if you understand this, drop a Y real quick, because we're about to go in. This next part, this is huge, so we're about to go in. Drop a Y if you understand me so far. Does, does all this make sense of why social dis conditioning can be both good and bad? Drop, drop a Y if it makes sense. I'm going to just wait a second here. Drop a Y if it makes sense of why this can be both good and bad. Does it make sense? Drop a Y over here on Facebook if it makes sense. Okay, perfect. All right. So let's talk about the neurological levels of your mind. This is an amazing concept. Okay. So I don't know if you're familiar with a branch of psychology called neurolinguistic programming. And the simplified way I can put it, it's, it's like the study of language, so neuro, mind, linguistic, words, programming. And things like hypnotists and stuff use these processes in order to make people believe different stuff about themselves. If you ever watch a great hypnotist, they might get somebody on stage like clucking like a chicken or something. But when you hear a great speaker, they use certain language patterns in order to make you believe certain things about yourself. Now, there's this branch of, this branch of neurolinguistic pro programming. One of the founders of it was a guy named Richard Brandner. And they did all this research on the mind, and they found that there were six neurological levels in which we process the world. And this is going to trip you out when you understand this, and I'm going to tell you something that's going to blow your mind about how you can rewire your brain today. And then we're going to get into those seven mindset shifts. But this is the basis. Because with this basis, what it's going to allow you to do, it's going to allow you to be like, okay, I understand why my mind is the way it is. So now I'm going to work to use things to rewire my mind so it works in my favor and not against me. We're going to break social conditioning today. So let's talk about the six neurological levels. So at the farthest level on the outside, think of it like a circle, you have environment. I'm going to just shorthand it, but you have environment. Well, I feel it. Okay. So basically, your environment at the highest, at the lowest level affects you, right? Where you're at affects you. Now, this is not the strongest level. So I don't want you to think just because you're in a bad environment. Keep in mind, I was at my mom's house, but you're going to see how this all ties in together once I get through it. But your environment affects the way you think about yourself. Like, if you live in a nice place, it's easier for you to believe that you're a successful person. If you're living in the ghetto, you're living in the slums, if you're living in a fucking cardboard box, it's a little bit more difficult for you to believe that you're a successful person. But we're going to get into that to a sec in a second. All right. So the next level, hold on. So the next level we have is our behaviors. So behaviors are day-to-day -day actions, what we do every day. So what you tend to do, like if you go to the club, if you, if you say this type of stuff, maybe somebody says something to you, you feel like you got to fight them or you got to react. These are behaviors. And the thing about the neurological levels is whenever something is affected on a lower level, it will automatically affect the higher level. 
Prime example, my behaviors changed, what I did every day changed, so therefore my environment slowly changed, which means the people I was around changed. The places I would go to changed. I was in the hood fighting, but once my behaviors changed, I wasn't going to those places anymore. Does that make sense? Do you follow me? So when we change something on the lower neurological levels, each level being stronger when you get deeper down, the levels above it change. Is everybody following me? I told you some deep shit. Everybody following me? Let's drop, hey, I'm following you in the chat if you're following me so far about these six neurological levels because we're about to go really deep and this is going to be some game changing shit. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So let's go one layer deeper. Capabilities. And hopefully I didn't draw this where I won't have space. Capabilities. Damn. Capabilities. So what you believe you can do. And there's an amazing thing, and I'm going to talk about it really briefly, um, about the way speech works. But you can definitely tell like what somebody's identity is by the words they say. That's a lot of times when people talk to me. The way I've been able to get a lot of people to be successful is because I understand how language patterns work. And basically all that means is this. All that, all that means is this. The way language, what's up, Jocko? I see you. Appreciate you, appreciate you for coming through. But the way language patterns work is when we say what we can and can't do, you probably didn't know that says a lot about what you believe about yourself and your identity. So capabilities are what we believe we can do. If I say, hey, can you public speak? Somebody people, like, I can't do that. That can or can't says a lot about what you believe your capabilities are. So prime example, if I don't believe I'm capable of public speaking, my behaviors will be such that I don't public speak. And I'll never find myself in an environment where I express that. Does everybody follow that? I told you this is some like mind bending shit. This is basically how the neurological levels work. So let's go one step deeper. Let's go one step deeper. Below your capabilities are your beliefs. What do you believe about yourself? Remember when I said I am something, I am a public speaker, I am these things. If you believe you're good at public speaking, that's going to go into your capabilities. If that capability is going to lead to your behaviors and it's going to change your environment, where you will go, what you'll put yourself into, what you'll put, your, what you'll put yourself around. This is why this is so powerful and we haven't even reached the bottom layers. So remember what I said earlier, if you're just joining in, appreciate you for coming. But what I said earlier is when you affect something lower, if you affect your beliefs, it'll automatically affect your capabilities. If you affect your capabilities, you automatically affect your behaviors. If you affect your behaviors, it's automatically going to affect your environment. And I'm going to tell you a story, a personal story, of how this happened to me. And um, you understand exactly how this can be powerful for you. So is everybody following me so far? Okay, perfect. Hopefully everybody follows me so far. So let's go one layer deeper. Identity. Who at the core we believe we are. This is our mission in life. This is where you feel like your sense of purpose comes from. Have you ever met people who, no matter what people told them, they'll change? Like, there's some people you meet, they just have a strong will. I'll give you a prime example. Good friend of mine, the world's most hated promoter. One of the things he loves to do when we go out is try to get people to get me to drink. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, I have no moral, moral feelings about drinking, nothing like that. It's just, I, I used to drink when I was in college. I used to get shit-faced when I was in college. And I just one day I didn't want to do it anymore. So I don't have any like good reason to tell people. But a lot of times when I go to the club, people will try to get me to drink. And the thing is, because of my identity, who I believe I am, and it wasn't formed by anybody else, I'm just like, ah, I'm not going to do it. Unless, I want, unless there's a specific reason, I might do it. I might take a shot here and there. But what I'm saying is my identity is such that it can't be shifted by other people because I have a deep, deep life missions and purpose. So me being on this live stream today, if I'm being honest with y'all, is because it goes down to my life's purpose, which is helping people create a future where they are in control. So I'm going to give you the tools to be successful. So I don't care what's going on. I'm doing this. I don't care if it's 5,000 people watching. I don't care if it's four people watching. I'm doing this shit because that's part of my identity. But remember, because I believe, because that's my identity, what do I believe about myself? I believe that I'm a person who can get on here and teach people stuff that they don't know, which then goes into what my capabilities are, whether it's live streaming public speaking, building businesses, coaching people, consulting, 
All these things go down to my capabilities because my identity is such that I am an entrepreneur. I am somebody who can bring value to the table. My beliefs, my capabilities, and my behaviors are what? I do things like live streams. I go public speak. I build businesses. I do these things because my identity is an entrepreneur. And then my environment is entrepreneurial environments. If you come to an environment, if you ever hang around me on a day-to-day -day basis, you'll see my environment is conducive to being an entrepreneur. Is everybody following me so far? So before we get to the last level, because I, I got a story to tell you when we get to this last level, this is what we're mostly targeting, is an identity level change. So when you talk to the top people, a lot of people think of it, think of it like a diet. I've heard people say this. A lot of people go on a diet, and the reason they fail their diet is because the diet is something they think is temporary. So if I teach you a technique, remember I told you about this earlier? Theory technique. If I teach you this, no matter how much I teach you, you'll probably just throw it off to the side and be like, that's fine, I did that shit. Because in your identity, you don't believe you're an entrepreneur. Does this make sense? It doesn't matter what somebody teaches you. If your identity is such that you don't believe it, you're not going to, if your identity is such that you say, I'm not that, you're not going to believe it. You're not, your capabilities are not going to change. Your behaviors are not going to change. And if none of this changes, your environment can't change. Does that make sense? Does everybody follow me? Drop a Y if that makes sense. I told you we had some heat for you. Drop a Y if that makes sense. On Facebook, drop a Y if that makes sense. I'm just going over here to check the chat real quick. Drop a Y if that makes sense. And if you can't send this out to a friend or something, if you feel like this is good information and people need to hear this, share this with a friend because this is powerful shit that is stopping so many people from being successful. And I just feel like it has to be put out there. Does that make sense? Perfect. Okay. So now, let's get really deep. The lowest level, and I can't even fit it there, but this is spiritual, so I'll just do this. So the lowest level is spiritual change. So this has to do with, this is past just your identity or your mission in life. This is like your connection to a higher power or something like that. Now, you don't necessarily need to have a change on this level to be successful. I'm just telling you that, but this is the deepest level change. This is literally how people can go from being one way one day and then a completely different way the next day. Now, let me explain a story of how I made a change like this and how this changed me. Now, before, say around 2014, 2013, I was a piece of shit in my mind. I believed that about myself. That was my identity. So even though I was learning a lot of theory and techniques, I'd read like something like five to 600 books at that point in my life. I knew a lot about business. I still was sleeping on the floor at my mom's house. I wasn't making much progress. I wasn't successful. I had two failed businesses at that point. So it was nothing I could do. The more I learned, the less I was successful. And I, I used to always be puzzled by this. I'm like, what's going on? What is happening? Right? So I remember after my business partner at the time, we went our separate ways, I was broken. I felt like I was worthless. I wasn't worthy of success. I felt like I was a complete and utter failure. I felt like that I would never be successful. I would never be somebody who could accomplish the dreams I wanted. And now pay attention to my beliefs and what it led to my capabilities and my identity at this point. Now, I remember I was so broken that I, I just kind of looked and I was like, you know, I just surrender. I just, I just fucking give up, right? And I cried myself to sleep that night. It's one of the hardest nights ever. But that night, I had a dream. And in that dream, I heard a voice say, you create the world around you. I talk about this story all the time. I've even got a symbol of what I saw in that dream over here on the wall. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe you can see it on Facebook. You can kind of see it right here on Facebook. But the next day, everything completely changed. I got up off the floor and I said, I have to take responsibility for my life. And I start being an entrepreneur at that point. Literally, the t as soon as that happened, I created a business. And I want to show you something. This changed. My identity changed immediately. My beliefs changed immediately. My capabilities changed immediately. My behavior changed immediately. I was at my mom's house, and I went from being in my mom's house to moving into my own place. I had roommates at first, and then eventually I got to the point where I had my own shit. I had my own stuff going on, simply because I had this deep level change, which made me have a deep identity level change. So the mindsets I'm going to drop on you today are designed to help you have a deep identity level change. These are mindsets that you should repeat to yourself. I'm going to give you little statements you can use to understand what mindset you should be in. 
Because if I can change the beliefs and the identity of who you believe you are, this is not changing you at the core as far as like, if you love to go party and have fun, you don't have to take that out. But what I'm saying is we have to expand your identity to include the endeavors that are going to make you successful. Does this make sense? Say, I want to be successful if this makes sense. If we can change your identity, maybe you'll have a spiritual belief. Have you ever heard people who near death experienced and all of a sudden they're just like a completely different person? This is why it's the deepest level change. But when people change their identity, even if you haven't had some life threatening experience or something like that, you can still have an identity level change. And this is why I work with most people. Every friend, everybody around me, if they stick around me long enough, they become entrepreneurs. They start building them businesses and six figure businesses and start making money and start inspiring other people. Why do you think that is? It's because they start having an identity level change. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? If you're watching me on Facebook, drop a Y. If you're watching me on Instagram, drop a Y. Does this make sense? Before we go into the seven mindset. Okay. Appreciate everybody for showing up on Instagram and Facebook. Um, we're going to be going for a while here, so we're about to get into the seven mindsets right now, but I definitely want people to understand this. I want people to understand these neurological levels. So the thing is what we're targeting is identity level change. And once we change that, it's going to change everything up the, up the ladder. Your, your beliefs will change, your capabilities will change, your behaviors will change, and your environment will change. So we're going to run through these really quickly. Okay. I'm so excited. Seven mindsets for... Success. Okay. Whew. Here we go. So, just to review up to this point, before we get into this. We know that mindset plus skill set equals success. If you're just getting here, we talked about this earlier. We talked about building a massive action triad, which is a collection of mindset, theory, and techniques. From there... We learned the theory of social conditioning, how social conditioning and the process of socialization has caused you to adopt beliefs that may not necessarily be helpful for you. So our job is to rewire our brain for success so we can take that and we can parlay that into something we really want to do. So people told me I should go to college. I said, fuck that. I'm dropping out of college because not that you can't be successful in college. It didn't serve me. It didn't serve the lifestyle I wanted to live. So do you follow me so far? These things, social conditioning may not serve you, so we have to break it and rewire it to live a life that we want. We talked about the six neurological levels, how environment, behaviors, capabilities, beliefs, identity, and your spiritual journey. And like I said, you don't necessarily have to have some spiritual journey. I know some people might be like, oh, I'm not, like, it doesn't matter. Just an identity level change will completely shift your life. I've seen people who have not had some great spiritual enlightenment, but they just had an event where they were like, look, this is no longer who I am, and then everything changed. So now we're going to get into the mindsets that will make us successful. All right. So let's talk about the first one, self-awareness. So if you're watching this so far, you're probably a person with self-awareness. I'm going to be honest with you. And the reason I say that is because you're taking the time, you could be anywhere, and you're taking the time to do this live stream with me. And I really appreciate that. Thank you for being here. But the reason I say that is because I heard this statement from one of my favorite books. I think it's called The Mastery of Destiny by James Allen. Very old book. And it said anybody who does not shrink from the process of self-crucifixion cannot fail to be successful. In layman's terms, all that means is anybody who is able to look at themselves, observe their own flaws, and they do not retreat cannot help be successful. I had a friend of mine. He sent out an email the other day. And the email was a detailed email. He sent it out to all his closest friends. And he was like, hey, look, I want everybody who's looking at this email to tell me what I could do in order to be more successful. What are the flaws? What are the things that I'm doing that I can improve upon so I can get to the next level? Now, why is this powerful? Because he has enough self-awareness to know that he doesn't even know everything about himself. So he's getting trusted advisors around him in order to help him be successful. But what do you think that's going to do to his long-term goals and success? Because he has this level of self-awareness, and I have never seen an entrepreneur who is successful in anything, anybody who's successful in any endeavor who doesn't have a high level of self-awareness. 
So we call this the self-awareness principle. Do you follow me so far? Do you follow me so far? So the self-awareness principle, the biggest thing that I see that gets in the way of the self-awareness principle is the ego. So we got to take the ego. We got to throw that motherfucker off a cliff. That's just what has to happen. This idea of who you are, who you believe you are, that's why I was so, I'm grateful, y'all. I am grateful that I was on that floor at my mom's house and I was a grown man sleeping on the floor. Why am I grateful? Because it broke my ego. I could no longer hold on to this identity of who I was. I wanted to be this smart, suave, sophisticated entrepreneur, but when you're on your mama's floor, that shit's out the fucking window. So I had to say, oh, look, man, let me change, let me be aware of where I'm at. And from that point, I'm always able to grow because I'm always able to sit back when somebody tells me some shit and say, what was valid about that? I'm going to look back on these live streams and say, what could I have done better? Could you have done something better? But think about it. If you're always aware, if you're always looking and asking yourself, what could I do to improve? Well, then there's no way you can't be successful. If you start a business right now, you put out a product and the product is shit. You say, hey, look, what was wrong with my product? Well, you know, the graphics weren't that good. Maybe you could learn to um, develop your products a little bit better. Then what's going to happen is when you make the next product, you'll become better. But most people, instead of accepting and being self-aware, what do they do? Their ego wants them to argue. Well, the only reason my product was this way is, fuck that. I have assistants. I have people who work with me. And I always tell them they want to argue so bad. When you have somebody with a lot of experience telling you, hey, look, something's wrong. You need to have enough self-awareness to be like, well, why the fuck are people always saying this about me? Why am I always trying to argue with motherfuckers? Why am I always, oh, no, nah. well, it's not like that because this, this, I can tell you right now, when I see people like that, most of the times, people are arguing all the time, saying shit like that, they're not fucking successful, they're fucking broke because they can't let go of their ego. Just telling you what I've seen. So, the first principle of success is self-awareness. Put yourself on the, the, the stage of self-crucifixion. What was I doing wrong? What could I be doing to improve? Constantly ask yourself this. So this goes back to what I said on neurological levels, right? The identity is that I'm a person who's self-aware, but the belief is that I could be wrong, so let me double check. If you can keep that in mind, tattoo that shit on your forehead, because without this, none of this other stuff I'm going to talk about means anything. Drop a Y if this makes sense. Drop a Y if this makes sense. Without this, none of this other shit is going to work, because what you're going to do is you're going to constantly fight the knowledge. If you even fought the knowledge that I'm giving you right here, like, I don't believe that's that. Just take a look. Maybe it's self-awareness. Just something to think about. So drop a Y if this makes sense. I'm going to continue to the next mindset. Okay, perfect. All right. So the second mindset we're going to talk about is your self-discipline level. All right. So your self-discipline level has to do with what you're able to achieve. The best way I can give you this analogy is this. I always tell people, let's say you're a photographer, somebody who wants to work with me. And this happens to people all the time. So they'll hit me up. Preston, I want to work with you, bro. Like, I love what you're doing. I want to be a part of your team. And I'm like, oh, yeah, let's do this shit. Let's, let's do it. So I hit them up and tell them, man, I need this from you. I need this from you. I need this from you. And then what happens? The excuses come. Now, why do the excuses come? Now, if you promise me a time, I don't care. Like, if you tell me it's going to take two weeks, well, I'm expecting two weeks. But let's say you say you're going to do it in the next three days. I put the work on you. And then you don't get it done in the next three days. You come to me with an excuse. I want you to understand, at the highest level of business, you can't really tolerate that shit. Because maybe you're a part of a bigger plan or a bigger business system. And we've talked about those before. And now that you haven't shown up, now I'm fucked. Now the people that are dependent on me are looking at me like, Princeton, what's up with you? So if you're a person who's bullshit and you're not able to discipline yourself, it's going to determine the level you can reach. You can't ever reach a level higher than the level of self-discipline that you have. Let that sink in. You will never reach a level higher than the self-discipline that you have. Do you think you're going to work with major corporations, company, the best, the best in the industry, if you can't get up on time? If you can't follow through on what the fuck you say? Can anybody imagine a person being successful like that? I want you to think about that. Now, I heard somebody talking about this today, talking about um, discipline, like, don't ever say self-discipline. And I got what he was saying. But if you have an identity level shift, you won't have to worry about this. If you believe you're an entrepreneur, you believe, if your identity changes to somebody who believes that there's somebody who gets up on time, who works, if you truly can embed that in your identity by 
embedding these mindsets that I'm talking about into your mind, this happens. I don't, I don't, like nobody tells me to do shit like this. Nobody tells me to get, if I sign that, that sign in sheet every morning over there by the wall as if I work for some corporation. Nobody tells me to do all this type of stuff. Nobody tell me to, told me to build a business. There's nobody saying, Prince, you need to do this, you need to do this. My self-discipline comes from the fact that my identity is this is who I am. I'm not trying to sugarcoat nothing, I'm, try, I'm not trying to be anything. I'm literally trying to give you the knowledge as it is. But I'm telling you, until you get this down, I don't give a fuck what happens. Until you get this down, I don't care what happens, you won't be successful. Okay, let me get my computer back up real quick. Make sure we still streaming. Okay, bet, perfect. All right, so let's talk about the next one. Three, resourcefulness. My handwriting's bad, y'all, so please forgive me. So the idea of resourcefulness is this is the greatest, re the greatest resource. Well, I don't know what I was saying there. This is the greatest resource, though, right? So the reason this is the greatest resource, because with this resource, you can get every other resource. You know, I see a lot of people get frustrated because people started with a lot more money than them. And I always say, good. I'm glad you started with more than me, because guess what? I've had to work harder. So when shit gets tough, it's easy for me. I've just seen a lot of my friends, they work in jobs and stuff like that, and it's not talking down on them. But when shit gets tough, when COVID and shit hit, guess what? They were like, oh my God, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna do this? But me, I'm like, let's fucking go. Let's get it. It's what I'm here for. It's what I'm built for, because I'm resourceful. I'm gonna figure out a way. This is the greatest resource. Now, what is the mindset that we want to hold here? The mindset was, is I don't believe in circumstances. I find the circumstances and make them. Your mind has to be equipped to understand that you yourself, as a human being, have one of the most powerful tools ever in your mind. Just ask yourself right now, if I say green right now, what are you thinking of? If I say elephant, your mind not only thinks of elephant, but it starts associating other things related to elephant. It's an association machine. It's a problem-solving machine. So I always talk about this when I say getting more knowledge and stuff like that, that's your theory. That's your techniques. Learn as many as you can because then your mind has more information and data to solve problems. But most people say, well, I don't know how to start a business, right? Can you get on the internet? Is there anybody you can reach out to to talk to about the business? That's simple resourcefulness. I'm not talking about you have to learn how to fashion a, a robot out of grass and make it throw shit over a cliff. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Look at, look at the environment around you. Be aware. Be like, okay, what am I not thinking of? I don't know how to build a business. Are there resources I can go purchase? Are there books I can read? Are there people I can reach out to? Resourcefulness. Most people, I don't know how to do it. And they just sit there. Well, since I don't know how to do it, I guess I won't start a business. Hmm. Hmm. Fuck that. Fuck that shit. Like, shit, this is what I'm saying. I know so many people who will be successful, but... As soon as they hit a roadblock, they just stop. This is why this is so powerful. This is the greatest resource. I'm, you can get everything. You can get money. Think about people who raise hundreds of thousands of dollars from thin air because they're resourceful. Think about the people who build businesses from absolutely nothing. They come from being homeless. They come from shelters. They come from all that shit because they learned how to be resourceful. How does one make that shift? Because like I said earlier, their identity changes. If you're a person who, fit, who changes from, oh, I don't know what's going on, to I'm going to figure this shit out, then your mind gets to working. That's why I love putting myself in situations this difficult. We always talk about this. When I moved out, I didn't have the money for rent. I'm not saying do that. Disclaimer. I'm not saying do that. I didn't have money for rent, but the reason I did it, because I wanted to learn how to be resourceful. And my mindset shifted that I'm a resourceful person. I'm going to figure it out. And I did. I had to beat my friends at poker to buy groceries my first month out. And I landed my client at the last minute so I could pay rent resourcefulness. You're stronger than you think. You can figure this shit out. If the circumstances don't exist, I will make them. That should be your mantra. If these circumstances don't exist, I am going to make them. Now they rap, got it out the mud. I, I be in a club, be honest with y'all, when I hear that shit, that's the mindset I'm thinking. They be like, got it out the mud. I really got it out the mud as an entrepreneur. So I ain't fuck with that. But that's talking about being resourceful. When you got it out the mud, that's all it means is you're a resourceful person who's not going to stop at nothing. Does that make sense? 
Drop a Y if that makes sense. Okay. Oh, they trying to. Yeah. So stream cut off a little bit. All right, we back. I don't know where y'all left off at. So if anybody comes into the chat or something like that, you can tell me left off at. But we lost the stream for a little bit on Instagram. So hopefully, um, hopefully, you'll be able to watch the whole thing. If you're on Instagram, don't worry. You'll be able to watch the whole thing on YouTube or something like that. But hopefully, we'll bring it back. But anyway, um, I don't know where I left off, but I was talking about the self-discipline level, and I was talking about resourcefulness. So hopefully, y'all caught most of that. My phone went into low power mode for some reason, so hopefully y'all caught most of that. So most of y'all, hopefully y'all caught most of that. So I'm going to move on to the fourth mindset now. I'm going to recap at the end. So if you missed some stuff, I saw this, the live went out for a second. But so if you missed some stuff, don't worry, I'm going to recap at the end. I like to recap. So. Let's go to the fourth mindset, which is clarity of intent. And the best way to know or think about this is I know what I want. The best way to think about it is I know what I want and I get what I want, right? So a lot of times when people are thinking about becoming successful in life, what they lack is a very clear intention. Most people wake up in a day. And guess what? They don't know what that day is going to be. Here's the thing I've realized. A lot of times when I don't set some type of intention for what I want to do, shit doesn't happen. It's just the truth. So the reason this is so powerful is because you have to understand that having a clear intention. Now, what does intention mean? It's not necessarily a goal. A goal is like something that you put in the future or whatever. Right? I want to accomplish this. But intention has to do more with your will. Like, for example, we understand it in the short term, we don't understand it in the long term. I can sit here right now and tell you, I am going to go to the store. I want to go to the store. Please, I'm going to set a goal to go to the store. But what is that thing that acts, what is that force, that driving force within you that makes you actually go, okay, I'm getting up, I'm going to the store now. That is your intention. So we have to set a strong intention in all parts of our life. So when I wake up in the day, I always put an intention for what I intend to what I want to accomplish that day. So my intention today is to do a live stream and have an amazing live stream. My intention today is to get this much work accomplished. My intention today is to finish this product. And the reason I do that is because having strong clarity of intent in all aspects of your life translate to accomplishing bigger goals. When I know day to day I'm going to get shit accomplished, clarity of intent is way more powerful. Does this make sense? Drop a Y if that makes sense. And if you just joined in again, I missed a lot, I missed a lot of people because the, the stream went down. But hopefully we better get through this. Hopefully my battery won't run out on my phone. See how much juice I got. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can plug this up real quick. Yeah, I don't want to lose y'all again. Because we're getting we're getting down to the to the good stuff. Let's see. Might be able to, oh, it won't reach. So hopefully it won't go out again. But if it does, go to Facebook. It's going to be on YouTube later this week, so check it out. So clarity of intent is important. So let's talk about the next part, which is the failure consciousness. So most people have a failure consciousness. And what do I mean by that? So most people, when they look at becoming successful or being successful, what tends to happen to them is that they believe that failure actually means something. I want you to take this mindset right now. Are you ready for it? There's no such thing as failure, only feedback. Oh my God. This is probably the most powerful concept I've ever learned. It's that there's no such thing as failure, only feedback. Now, why is this so important? Because a lot of times when you're going out there and you're trying to be successful, you're going to have failures. Just being honest with you. I have failed tons of times. My live stream just cut off randomly in the middle of this shit. 
In a way, that's a failure, right? I didn't have a perfect live stream all the way through. Even though I got the backup if you're just joining again. Um, I got the backup over here, so you can go to Facebook and watch it. And it's going to be on YouTube later this week. But the thing is, things go wrong. Shit goes wrong. But we continue anyway. That's feedback. What do I need to do next time? Remember I talked about self-awareness. What do I need to do next time to make sure that doesn't happen? You follow me? That's a simple solution, simple fix, but the whole thing is I understand that there's failure. So there's a concept I want you to learn today, and it's called going in until failure. Most people don't go until failure, and I'm going to tell you what I mean by this. So in working out, if you go work out in the gym, I remember learning that there's a way that you can do push-ups or any exercise, and what it's called is going until failure. Literally going into your muscles cannot go anymore. And this concept was something that really stuck with me, and I applied it to my entrepreneurial life. When I'm pursuing something that I really want, clarity of intent, I'm going to go until the shit can't go anymore. I'm going to go until there is literally no way to proceed forward. And what you'll find is 99% of the time, there's always a way to go forward. So many people give up on their business. I got to tell you, I was broke sleeping on my mother's floor. I had no money. My bank account was overdrawn, negative $107,035. And I just tried shit. I kept trying shit, kept trying shit, kept trying shit. When they said, this ain't going to work, that's going to fail. I just kept trying shit. Because I realized that there's no such thing as failure. The only failure is the person who quits. If you fucking give up, then you're a failure. But here, if I'm giving you the tools to be successful, I'm just trying to tell you as an entrepreneur, you got to get rid of this failure consciousness shit. There's no such thing as failure, only feedback. Another thing that causes us to fail is sometimes we have what's called imposter syndrome. So if you follow me so far, imposter syndrome is believing that we're not worthy of what we put out. I've definitely struggled with this, and this is a difficult one. So basically, I would, I would go places, especially when I was at my mom's house. It really fucked with me. I would go places, and people were saying, like, literally, like, bro, you, you're so smart, bro. Why are you not a millionaire yet? And I feel like I wasn't worthy of that shit. I'm like, millionaire? Jeez, I'm at my mom's house. What are you talking about? Right? I felt like I wasn't worthy of it. I felt like an imposter. I remember there was this great writer... He was like one of the biggest writers of all time, but he always had this feeling in the back of his head that his audience was going to figure him out, that he really wasn't worthy of the success. And it's crazy, because sometimes we'll look at these big stars and these big celebrities and we'll not understand under the surface, they're struggling with the same things you might be struggling with, which is they don't believe they're worthy of that shit. So it leads to failure because they're scared to take risks because they think they're going to be found out. I'll tell y'all some real shit. If everything went wrong for me right now, if I lost my house, my business, and everything, it's fine. Everybody could laugh. They could joke. They could send the shit around the internet. But one thing for certain, I know I'm going to bounce back because it's only feedback. I'm going to be like, what happened there? What went wrong? It's my L. I'm going to take it. I'm going to eat the L. And it's no different when I left school. Everybody did the same shit. They laughed at me. They talked shit behind my back. They joked. I remember being in people's group chats, joking about, oh, he's going to be a failure, you ain't going to be shit, right? And that hurt. But what did I say? I said, it's only, it's only feedback. Fine. But when I became successful, what do you think happened? Princeton, bro, can you help me with my business? I, I need help with my business. Oh, yeah? I'm pretty sure you do now. So this failure consciousness shit, this feeling like you imposter, realize the only imposter is the person who has not had the identity level change that we talked about here. Once you have this identity level change, and this is what these mindsets are going to help you do, then what's going to happen is you're going to start to be like, oh, I can do this shit. This is really who I am. Drop a Y if that makes sense. Drop a Y if that makes sense. Okay. One last thing I want to put out there, because I thought it was always cool. I don't know if you've probably heard it. You may have heard this if you're in self-development, but fear stands for false events appearing real. With this concept of going until failure, a lot of times you have these ideas of what's going to happen if you get on there, like, oh, well, if I get up there, people are going to laugh at me, people are going to do all that. Most of your fears do not come true. Do you follow me? Most of your fears do not come true. So when it comes to boss events appearing real, what I want you to truly understand is this. Most people fuck with people because they do things that they're scared to do. They're like, oh, fuck, how is this person doing this? But false events appearing real, what that means to me is that, well, here's the thing. Let me say it like this. This is another way I'll say it. Everything that you want in life is hiding behind fear. What do you want? What are some things you want? Do you want to make more money? Do you want a better dating life? 
Do you want to be around successful and talented people? Do you want to live a life where you help your friends and family? You're able to pay for your, for your mother, buy her a house, whatever it is. You want your younger siblings not to struggle. You want your significant other to feel like you're worthwhile. You want to be able to go out to the club and spend money. I don't give a fuck what you want to do. No judgments here. But the reason you can't do that is probably because there's something you fear doing. If it comes down to making money, taking risk and living and trying things that other people have not tried, that is simply your fear stopping you. If it comes to being the social person or going out your way, speaking to people, reaching out to people and say, hey, you know, whatever it is, even even dating, right? Actually not, you might get rejected. That's just the fucking game, right? People laugh about people getting rejected, but the reason I don't ever give a fuck about getting rejected, because I say nobody has the balls to go out there and take the actions necessary to be who they are. So if you laugh at me for getting rejected, if you laugh at me for failure, I don't give a fuck because I know if you're laughing at me, it's probably because you don't play the game and you're scared to get out there yourself. So that's the mindset I want y'all to have about people who are like laughing about your failures and say, fuck them. Because at the end of the day, when shit goes on, they're going to be the same people coming back to you saying, hey, bro, how do I get it done? And you're going to change the game. And they're going to still be at the same spot. So remember that. False events appearing real. Drop a Y if you follow me so far. If this is making sense. If this is resonating with you, drop a Y. Okay. Here we go. The next thing I want you to focus on is what's called process orientation. So process orientation, there's a, great st there's a great quote from the Bhagavad Gita, and if you're into reading stuff like this, it's great, which means that you're entitled to the fruits of the labor. Well, no, you're entitled to the labor, not the fruits of the labor. And what this simply means that is a lot of times we're so outcome dependent, which means I got to make this much money from something. I got to do this much from something. We miss the whole process. See me, I set goals. Like I said, I'm very clear in my intent. I know where I'm going, but at the end of the day, I just enjoy the process of being here with you, building with you right here. I'm not concerned about, hey, is it 7,000 people on the stream? Because what does it matter? Because the content I'm building. I already know people go back and watch this shit during the week. It doesn't matter. It's the value I'm giving. So what I understand is I focus on the process. I'm not too dependent on the outcome. Because what happens when you get too dependent on the outcome, let's say, I'm going to just show you, I'm going to give you an example. If you're starting off right now, you just started your business, you're focused on the outcome. Typically, when you first start a business, you're not going to be getting the outcomes you want. So by focusing on the outcomes, what happens is you discourage yourself. So it, it's a feedback loop. Let's say you're like, man, I'm starting my business tomorrow. I want to make $1,000 a week. Well, you fail to make the $1,000 a week. And then what do you start saying? I'm a failure. Then you say, I'm going to try to do it again next week. Then you fail again. Then what starts to happen? All of a sudden, going back to our neurological levels, you start to build an identity that I'm a failure. And then you just stop entrepreneurship altogether. You pick up your ball, you, you run home from the court. Like, I don't want to play anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. Because you feel like you're a failure. I know, I'm being a little silly, but the whole point is, you feel like a failure. Fuck that. Let me tell y'all something. All I do is focus on the process. Like I told you, if I get rejected, it is what it is. What can I improve next time? Self-awareness. What can I improve next time? Focus on the process. I'm process oriented. Does that make sense? When you focus on the process, you keep progress. So what I want you to focus on with process orientation is I'm outcome dependent. I'm not worried about the outcome. I'm worried about enjoying the process. Does that make sense? Drop a Y if that makes sense. Drop a Y if that makes sense. All right, seven. And there's so many mindsets that we can have, but I feel like it's my duty to, to add this. Integrity. One of my favorite books of all time, and if you can, you should read it. It's a free book. It's in the public domain. You can read it. It's The Eight Pillars of Prosperity. And it says that prosperity rests on a moral foundation. Now, why is this important? I know you've seen people in the past who have done scammy shit, who've done little sideways shit, faked, frauded falsified shit, and it seems like they're winning, right? But the thing about this low vibration shit that's going on, it takes you on a roller coaster ride and it comes crashing down. Let me be real with you. 
I had friends and family who, back in the day, they're all in jail now, but they sold drugs. They did all that shit back in the day. I had people from the hood that was fighting people, fucking people over, doing bad shit to them. A lot of them are dead right now. But it's because that low vibration energy, they had no integrity to it. So it looks like they're winning in the short term, but in the long term, boom, you always see this fucking crash that destroys their life, completely decimates them, and humiliates them because they didn't build on the moral foundation. One of the great things I loved about this book, The Eight Pillars of Prosperity, they said, is that the person who builds their temple of prosperity on integrity cannot fail to succeed. And why is that? Let's say you find out some fucked up things about me right now. You may be like, oh, this is this, this is this, but it's not true. At the end of the day, it could fuck me up for the short term, but when I'm vindicated and people figure it out, I'm going to bounce back even harder because it's like, damn, he was falsely accused. He never did any of that type of shit. So if I always operate in integrity with all my dealings, let me tell you something. I'm going to always do contracts and business because it's good business, but I have people that I've done business with that I guarantee they didn't need a fucking contract because in my spirit, I'm going to do right by them. That's who I am. When I was at my mom's house, I could have went and tried to rent cars and do all this type of shit to try to paint this image that I was more successful than I was, but fuck that. I got the info. I'm going to bring it to you real and raw. And if you don't like it, cool. If you need to see the Lambo before you understand that this knowledge is useful, I understand. When that pops up, a lot of people will be like, oh, okay, now I'm going to listen. That's fine. I understand it. I'm not even judging it. What I'm saying is, but the biggest thing is I'm just getting at that. I build my businesses with integrity. I, can, I make mistakes. But I'm not going to knowingly fuck somebody over. Does that make sense? Drop a Y if that makes sense. Prosperity rests on a moral foundation. Hopefully it's, hopefully it's still going, but I keep losing the feed because my low battery mode just wants to keep coming on. Anyway, prosperity rests on a moral foundation. So this is integrity. This is seven mindsets that you need. And I'm going to give you a bonus mindset here that I think is important that a lot of people miss. But let's go through these real quick. Self-awareness, we need to know we need to kill the ego. We need to be aware of ourselves in order to make changes. If you're not aware of it, you can't make a change. Self-discipline. The level of self-discipline you have is going to be the height you can reach. If you're not disciplined, you're not going to be able to work with the top of the top people because they're going to expect a certain level of discipline for you. Resourcefulness. You can get any other resource with resourcefulness. This is why this is the greatest resource. Understand, if I don't have the circumstances, I will make them. Put yourself in difficult situations and try your best to figure it out. This is a training ground. This is not something you just watch one time. You review this shit over and over and say, let me embed this in my mind. Because once you embed this in your mind, what happens? You have an identity level change. Clarity of intent. Know what you want. Know where the fuck you're going at all times. Like I said, I wake up every day and say, this is my intention. This is what I'm going to accomplish today. You'd be surprised by just saying, this is what's going to get accomplished today, how it changes your mentality about the day. If you don't accomplish, you feel almost guilty. And that's, that's good negativity that will help you become successful because I want to be winning more days than I'm losing. I want to be accomplishing shit more days than I'm not accomplishing shit. Failure consciousness. There's no such thing as failure, only feedback. Don't look at the negatives and stuff like that. Just know, if you fail, it's just feedback. And all the people who are laughing about it, they probably don't play the fucking game, or they're going to be the people calling you down the road saying, hey, bro, how can I be successful? Don't even worry about them. You hating? Fuck it. I don't care. Process orientation. Remember, focus on the process, not the outcome all the time. Yes, you want to have goals. Yes, you want to get results when it comes to business. But enjoy the process. We're here. We're doing this shit. I told you this year I'm going to help you get, get to that seven-figure business. That's my goal. And I want to give you all the tools you need. But I'm enjoying the process. I'm here with you. I'm on the live streams. I'm enjoying it. Integrity. Always built with integrity. If you try to do some janky ass business, please don't call me. I don't fuck with janky ass business. Shit like that. I don't fuck with fucking people over. I don't do none of that. So always build with a moral foundation. I feel like it's my obligation. You might be able to get rich, not having integrity, but typically what I see is the shit comes crashing down in the most, uh, most fucked up way. So always build your businesses with integrity. Do the shit the real way. This is what I'm going to tell you, right? I'm going to tell you. I know, I know people who were scamming. I know people doing all that type of shit. All the people I know from back in the day is either dead, they fucking are in jail, or they fucked off because of this. Just, just, the, just the truth. Integrity. Build your shit with integrity, and then you'll never go wrong. So I want to give you this bonus mindset, which I think is super important. Drop a Y if you follow me so far. Drop a Y if you follow me so far. Uh, 
All right. Turn my computer off real quick. Check in on Facebook real quick. Perfect. All right. So, this is a powerful mindset that you need to learn because, in all honesty, the reason most people can't be successful is because money mindset. And I can talk about this all day, but one of the biggest beliefs that people have about money is money is the root of all evil. Now, I want you, want you to understand something about your beliefs. Remember when I was talking about the neurological levels, right? This is some, catch this, catch this. This is important. Going back to the neurological levels. You remember I said that if the lower levels are affected, the higher levels get affected? So, for example, if I believe that money is the root of all evil, well, my capability to make money is not going to be as strong. I may feel like money is a necessity. I have to get it, but my capabilities are not going to be as strong. My behaviors are going to affect that. And that's going to affect my environment. I'm not going to put myself in money situations because I'm going to think rich people and stuff are evil. Now, here's the funny thing. I don't know if you knew this, but money is the root of all evil is actually a misquote. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. It's not the actual thing. And the reason I think that's an important distinction is because everything can be used good or bad. Gun. A gun could murder somebody. But let's say somebody was about to harm you and your family, and you use a gun to protect yourself. Now, you don't like guns. I get it. I'm just trying to make an example that it could be used for good and bad reasons. Hopefully, we don't get in situations where we got to shoot anybody or anything like that. But I'm just saying it could be good, used for good and bad situations. Right? If you're in Texas, you're probably like, oh, shit, I got a gun. I don't give a fuck. You're right. Anyway, my point is, that's the type of mindset you got to think about, right? Like, in the wrong hands, anything can be bad. In the right hands, things can be good. So it's a money mindset, right? So here's an exercise I want to leave you with. And this is how you rewire your beliefs. So this is the big bonus I wanted to give you as far as how to rewire your beliefs. There's a process with anything. And we use it in money usually because most people have these false beliefs about the world. But what I want you to do is I want you to take a sheet of paper or something like that. You can rewind this live stream or something like that later. Hopefully, it's still running. All right, perfect. So basically what it is is this. First, I want you to write down every negative belief that is holding you back. Every single one. Every bullshit belief that you have about money, about who you are, your success, everything, I want you to, I want you to write it down of what is holding you back. I want you to put to that, that to the side. Then what I want you to say is, what's your goal? What do you want to accomplish? Write some things you want to accomplish. And then what I want you to do is to write what's happening. So for example, we want to associate much pain as possible with not accomplishing your goals. So you write down all the reasons or things you can't do because you're holding on to these mindsets. I want you to write down everything that you cannot do because you're holding on to these toxic beliefs. I'm not shit. I'm not successful. I'm not worthy of love. Rich people are evil. Whatever it is, I want you to write down all those mindsets, and I want you to say, what is this stopping you from accomplishing? What are the things that you can't do because you're holding on to these mindsets? Are you not living in a nice place? Are you not around better people? Are you not in the dating relationships and the life that you want? Are you not making the money you want? Are you not seeing your life going where you want? I want you to write all this down because it's important. I want you to associate much pain as possible with holding on to these negative beliefs. And this is how we create the identity level change. Write down all the shit that you're holding on to. Right? Get that pain in there. Like, make it painful. I can't have the friends I want. I can't live in the place I want. Make it as painful as possible because we want to rip that shit out of your mind and have an identity level change. From there, I want you to take all those beliefs. So we got the beliefs, right? And I want to reassociate re them. So, for example, take all your beliefs and reassociate them to something positive. The love of money is the root of all evil, right? But that's because the people who use it and, and feel that way about it, don't use it for the best ends. I will use it to create positivity in the world. Reframe the beliefs. I'm not shit. Well, maybe, and I wouldn't even say this, but this is just an easy example. Based on the knowledge I had before, I may have believed that. But now I understand that my identity and my life's purpose doesn't have to be dictated by the world. I know 
I'm worthy of all the love and success in the world. May sound corny. I'm, trust me. I'm one of the few people who, who, when I heard this shit, I was like, this shit is corny. But I promise you, when I was on my mother's floor, I started doing all this type of shit, and this is what changed everything. I knew all the skills. I told y'all. If y'all was watching early, I told y'all. I had read 500 books at the point when, before I started my, this business now. I read 500 books. I had skills. I had talent. I was out there, I was out there banging the concrete. I was hustling. I was doing 100-hour fucking weeks. I was doing it. Nothing. But when I had these mindset shifts, I did little shit like this that I thought was corny. I said, you know what, fuck, I'm just going to try it. I'm just going to try it. I know it's corny. I'm just going to fucking try it. Take those negative beliefs, reassociate them. Every negative belief. This may take some time, but associate as much pain as possible. What are these beliefs stopping you from accomplishing? And then I want you to take the time to reframe these beliefs. And that is how we use these seven mindsets to become successful. Let me tell y'all something. If y'all like this here, I want y'all to check out how to start a business in 30 days. This is literally why, why I have this program because remember earlier when I talked about the success equation? Let's go all the way back and we'll review and we'll wrap it up. When I talked about the success equation, it said mindset plus skill set equals success. And how to start a business in 30 days, I don't know if you know this, not only is about the skills that make you successful, but also the mindset that makes you successful. And it's going to help you build this massive action triad, which is the mindset, the techniques, and the theory. So you have everything you need to be successful. Let me tell you something. To have an identity level change, like we talked about in the, the neurological levels, it's easy to do that once you have the actual skills. Once we know we can do something, it's easier to have the identity level change. Sure, you can have it without it. I just gave you an exercise to rewire beliefs, and that can li literally lead to some powerful shit in your life. But I'm telling you, once you get to that point, you're like, okay, I need to know what to do. How to start a business in 30 days. You can go to howtostartabusinessin30days.com and literally pick up a copy of it. This is something that I know for a fact will help you. I literally just added something that not only teaches you the mindsets, but also the skill sets in ways to make money starting right now, no matter where you're starting from. This is the power. This is the easiest way to build a profitable, freedom-based business from the comfort of your home. You're literally going to sit back and watch 50 videos where me and other entrepreneurs explain to you in plain English exactly how to build a business. And I'm even going to take you through a portion of the mindsets and mentalities that you need in order to be successful. What I'm trying to do here is get an identity level change. And I tell people this all the time. The reason I offer this stuff for such a low price is because my goal is to reach as many people and help create one million seven-figure business. And if you're watching this, thank you for watching all the way through, and I want you to be part of it. So basically, why, by doing this, my goal is to help you become one of those seven-figure businesses. And by doing this, I feel like I can enrich the world. I can help people not only find financial freedom, but also their mission in life, their journey, their path, so they can feel the fulfillment. I wake up every day, and I do what I want to do. It's not perfect every day, but I realize that the happiness that I have and the happiness that I continue to achieve higher and higher levels of is because I have control of my day. And I want anybody watching this to feel the same thing. So go check out how to start a business in 30 days. My goal this year is to get you to a point where even if you don't make that seven figures this year, you can get to the point where you are competent enough to support yourself with your business or at least on the way there where you feel confident that, hey, if I keep pushing this, and I keep developing myself, I'm going to be able to be successful, and my business will be my main source of income. That was the most beautiful thing to me, to leave the floor at my mom's house and to be able to support myself completely off my business. I came up off complete entrepreneurship. I never had a fucking job the entire way through. That was a joy to me, and it doesn't have to be that for everybody. I'm not saying that you have to do that. But what I am saying is that I want to create a pathway for you to get to the point where you experience that type of freedom in your day. How to start a business in 30 days is the best way to do it, and I appreciate y'all for watching. I'm going to do a quick recap. Um, well, you know what? Instead of a recap, Q&A. If you have any questions, drop the Q&A. Drop some questions for me, and I'll answer a couple before we cut it out. So if you got any questions, drop them real quick in the chat. Any questions, drop them real quick in the chat. Okay. All right.
So basically, oh, too far back. <laughs> so basically, remember this. I don't think we had any questions, so let me check one more time. Thank you for watching. Okay, so I'm going to get out of here. I'm just going to wrap it up real quick, and then we're going to get out of here. So remember, the success equation is the skill set plus mindset equals success. We want to build a massive action triad, which is the theory, the technique, and the mindsets that create success. Now, remember what I said. This is probably the most important part. If you don't have this, this other shit doesn't matter. But that doesn't mean these are unimportant, but I've always so talked about ways that you can maximize these things. Social conditioning. Remember, the social beliefs and stuff that you adopt in your lifestyle, those typically do not come from you. A lot of you may have decided why you believe the things you do, why you follow the religions you follow, why you follow the politicians you follow. I'm not here to make any judgments on that. Just understand that a lot of the times that comes from your mother, your father, other people, and you've been socialized into believing these things. So I always examine my beliefs and say, is this me or is this some shit society told me? Now, I might still come to the same conclusion that I like some shit, right? Um, society told me that certain ice creams were good, and I also still like those ice creams after my own investigation. So it's not always bad. It's just the fact that all your beliefs that are not serving you, if you're not where you want, if a belief is stopping you from getting where you want, then you should analyze that belief and see if it's something that maybe you need to reevaluate. Six neurological levels. At the deepest level, we have spirituality, but we, can, we don't even have to talk about that one. Identity. If you have an identity level change, and that comes from rewiring those beliefs, and I gave you an exercise on how to do that within this live stream. If you rewire those beliefs, Powerful things can happen. Powerful change can happen. When, you're, when your identity changes, your beliefs change. Your capabilities change, your behaviors change, and your environment will change. Like I told you, I had a deep level change, an identity level change, and I went from sleeping on my mother's floor to moving downtown to a two-story. Identity change, my beliefs change, my capabilities change, my behaviors change, my environment change. Simple as that. The seven mindsets. Self-awareness first. Kill the ego. Self-discipline level. You're only going to go high as your level of discipline. Resourcefulness. The greatest resource. With this, you can get every other resource. Don't be mad when people have more than you. Just use an opportunity to figure out ways to be resourceful. And then once you get to the same level as them, you're going to dominate them. Clarity of intent. Know what you want. What do you intend? Set your intention. If you intend to accomplish something, don't be scared. Don't be scared of the next thing, which is failure. Just go after things strongly. Don't worry about the outcome so much. Failure consciousness. No such thing as failure, only feedback. Remember, go after things. Don't worry about the outcome so much, just go after it. Process orientation. Focus on the process. Focus on the process and not worry about the outcome all the time. And funny enough, usually when I focus on the process, I get the outcomes I want. Integrity. Build everything on a moral foundation, which means that you don't do things that are scammy, fucked up, because in the long run, you might get successful in the short term. I'm not saying that you can't be successful. I'm just saying the fact that in the long run, you're not going to be able to sustain that, and then that shit will take a crash. That's just been my experience. And then the money mindset. Remember that the way you use this, you have to love money. You have to love the idea of accomplishing things, because think of it, what you can do with it. That doesn't mean you have to become a person who's all about the money all the time, but just understand that what it comes down to is the negative association. Somebody may be an asshole or a dickhead when they get money and do fucked up shit, but that doesn't mean you're going to do that. So use it for the things that can make you successful. Money can help you build things, donate to charities, help your family, help you out of poverty, help you eat, help you become a better person because you can use that stuff to change the world. What are you going to do with it? Remember this exercise we did to rewire your beliefs. Use this as something powerful to create that deep identity level change and I promise you, you're going to see things that you never thought were possible in your life. I want to thank everybody for being here on the stream. We had a little te technical difficulties where it went out real quick, but if you join me, you stay to the end. Appreciate you for watching and next Monday hit me up with some topics y'all want to hear about and I'll go in depth just like this on them but I will talk to y'all next time. Keep taking action. Massive action movement and we out.